Hello and howdy everyone. Uh, a couple of days ago I had a fantastic experience. I saw one of my favorite films of all time, uh, Blue Velvet, uh, on the big screen for the first time in glorious 35 millimeter, And I thoroughly enjoyed it. You know, I, I, I don't know what else to say. Uh, Blue Velvet for me is a 10. Uh, to see it on the big screen for the first time and to see it in one of the biggest theaters in Los Angeles uh, was just absolutely gorgeous. Um, it was thrilling. Um, it was intense. Uh, it was just, it was amazing. You know, and I've seen Blue Velvet a lot. You know, I, I don't know how many times I've seen Blue Velvet. I've seen Blue Velvet a lot. Uh, and again, this is the first time seeing it in the theater, and it just felt like a totally new experience. Uh, it was, it was, it was brilliant. Um, I, you know, I don't even know what else to say. Uh, Blue Velvet is about, uh, it's a, it's a mystery. Um, <clears throat> uh, a boy, uh, a college boy, uh, moves home to take care of his, uh, of his family. His, his father has a, uh, episode of some sort, heart attack, um, and, you know, has to go into the hospital, needs care, uh, and so the, uh, the son returns home to take care of, uh, the family, uh, while the father is, has fallen. Um, while there, he, <clears throat> while on a walk, you know, while on a walk, he discovers a human ear near his house. And curiosity gets the better of him, and it leads him into uh, the dark underbelly of the town that he's always lived in. Uh, basically, the dark underbelly of life that uh, exists all around us. Um, <clears throat> it's a David Lynch film. Uh, I, I want to say it's 1987. I'm not entirely certain about that. I know it's from the late 80s. Uh, I, I, you know, think it's one of David Lynch's, uh, finest films. Um, you know, he, he makes brilliant stuff in my opinion. So it's kind of tough to, uh, judge his, his films because I think that they kind of, of, you know, try to avoid being judged. Uh, and one, I just think he's brilliant. I think he's an American master. Um, I, you know, he doesn't make anything that's not just totally interesting. Maybe, you know, you don't understand it, uh, and to some degree it's going to be weird, but, uh, <clears throat> you know, even I think of, for, for my opinion, his, like, least enjoyable film for me is, is, uh, Lost Highway. You know, uh, a lot of Lost Highway makes me, uh, uncomfortable enough to, that I don't want to watch it, you know. Uh, that I'm not fascinated with it. I, I'm always fascinated with all of Lynch's films. You know, they're just hypnotic. Uh, you know, even Lost Highway is still, you know, it can't be dismissed. You know, it can't be dismissed. Uh, Blue Velvet also features, uh, and I think the true reason I love it, uh, again, I started kind of watching David Lynch uh, from Blue Velvet, uh, is Dennis Hopper. Uh, Dennis Hopper delivers one of the uh, the greatest screen performances of all time, in my opinion. Um, he uh, is one of the uh, greatest screen villains of all time. Uh, Frank Booth. Uh, he, uh, I, I think, uh, it, you know, he ruined the game for everyone else who wanted to be a movie bad guy. You know, because now every movie bad guy that followed had to be at some level of Frank Booth. And uh, I don't know, I think that performance is, is, is for the time capsules. I mean, literally, like you can take that out in a thousand years and I think it would be as just as disturbing uh, as watching it uh, in 1987. Um, you know, I, I think, uh, I, for me, you know, acting is it. And, and there's, not too many better performances, you know, balls out, committed, gung ho performances uh, like Dennis Hopper as Frank Booth. Um, 
that's what was so good about this is to see him, you know, on a screen the size of a football field is just, you know, amazing to me. Uh, it, I was sitting on the edge of my seat every time that Frank Booth came into frame. Uh, it, you know, it, it just fills me with an ecstatic joy uh, to, to watch him uh, flip out, basically. Uh, and to have absolutely no fear, um, absolutely no hesitation. Uh, you know, it's, it, it's the art of performance. And it's on display right there for you in Blue Velvet. Um, <clears throat> you know, maybe the film isn't flawless. Uh, you know, there's a lots of... You know, David Lynch is always intensely dramatic. You know, at times he, you know, he can... Well, I think he's always intensely everything. Um, no matter if the mood is humorous or, or scary, uh, you know, sad, it's always taken to 11. Um, you know, there's, there's some scenes here that feature, I guess, bad acting, uh, in a way. I mean, people were laughing. Uh, the crowd was good. You know, the, again, I, when I heard that Blue Velvet was going to be on the big screen, I, I bought my ticket, you know, I immediately, uh, I had to be there. I, I was, I always kind of hope that movies that I love and, and get so excited about, I always kind of picture them as being like events. Like, oh man, this place is going to be sold out. It's going to be crazy. Um, it wasn't sold out. It wasn't crazy. Actually, it wasn't anywhere near sold out. Um, I'd say the theater was probably a quarter full. Still a good crowd. Obviously, fans were there. Um, so you've got a, you know, a good vibe going on. Uh, you know, People laughed at some of the acting, and I get that. And mostly it's Laura Dern. Um, Laura Dern's in this. I haven't even said who's in the film yet. Uh, Laura Dern's in this, and, well, she has a lot to do emotionally, and she has to exhibit very strong emotions. And I don't know whether it's, you know, she's doing a fine job of it. It's just that it seems so kind of out of place. Her, again, her dialogue, Lynchian dialogue, is all very uh, odd. You know, it's, it's, it's... Lynch... You know, I think a lot of his style and is, is summed up with, like, the end of this film. Uh, the end of this film focuses on a bird, uh, a, you know, a natural being, a natural animal, that is obviously fake. It's an animatronic bird that, you know, again, looks fake, moves in a, you know, fake manner. It's artificial, but yet it is representing life. And I think that that is, I think a, a, a main theme in all of Lynch's work is that, uh, somehow life becomes robotic and repetitive and unsurprising and it's you know his dialogue is kind of like that too where i you know i again i'm i'm trying to explain something that i don't even think should try and be explained you know it's just art it just is uh and i you know i'm, I'm failing because i i can't really get to my point but there i i don't know maybe i should just stop talking about it but there is there is a uh he says great he, he, he makes his character say, you know, very meaningful, deep things, but yet everything else around him, including, like, the scene before, the scene after, is so odd in context that it makes the emotion and that emotional reveal somewhat mechanical and somewhat where you could laugh at it. 
I mean, you know, you have scenes in this film where, uh, you know, they're afraid for their lives. They're they're afraid for you know they're falling in love, uh, you know, and they're they're just afraid. And yet, when they express those fears, um, when they are true to themselves, it seems that they are not in the right place you know that they are not in the right world um and so it creates this uneasy feel and again it makes people laugh i again i can't call it like bad acting or even uh you know bad storytelling it's just lynch you know it's just david lynch uh it's what he does um The film is, is gorgeous. Uh, you know, it, this was a 35 millimeter print. I was slightly worried that it was going to be digital, um, though I do kind of feel that I would like to see a digital print because whatever, this is a authentic 35 millimeter print from 1987 or whenever this was released. Obviously, there's been some wear and tear to the image. Um, it still gave it that warmth. It gave it that feel of, you know, I'm watching a film. Uh, but, you know... They're scratchy, you know, in places. Uh, and Blue Velvet and most of Lynch's work is so dark anyway that, uh, um, visually dark, that, you know, sometimes that graininess of the film, you know, helps. Uh, the best part of seeing a film in the theater is sure the visuals. Uh, I saw Blue Velvet for the first time uh, when I was a freshman in college. I rented the video from the dorm video store. Like, our, my dorm had a, you know, snack shop, whatever, and had a limited selection of movies that have probably been checked out, you know, a thousand times. So, the first time I watched Blue Velvet was on a old VHS tape I watched it on, you know, a little 14-inch TV VCR combo. Do you remember those? Um, and I just had to sit like what I felt like, you know, a foot away from the TV to see anything. Um, and I don't know. I just felt like I had to keep watching it, basically. Um, I watched it uh, a few times, I think, that year. Um, and then later on, uh, you know, I watched it on DVD, but to see it on the big screen was just absolutely gorgeous. Uh, but the big difference is sound, you know, that I think is, is, uh, the best thing about seeing a movie, you know, and love on the big screen for the first time is because you will hear things that you've never heard before. You know, there's dialogue, uh, in here that I'd never heard before. Uh, there were lines that I never heard before that I love. I wish I could remember. I instantly wanted to memorize everything that I hadn't heard before. Uh, and, you know, I guess it's just because I don't turn my home theater system up to where, you know, my ears will bleed or my neighbors will complain. Um, I own Blue Velvet on Blu-ray, I, and I still went to see this for, you know, in the theater. Uh... I, let's see, I, I don't even know. Okay, it stars Kyle McGlaw. All the acting is, is really good. Um, you know, it's all very Lynchian, you know, so it's, it's I don't even want to call it good. I don't want to call it bad. I want to call it a uh, an expression of the vision of David Lynch. Uh, you know, he just is uncompromising um, and, and brilliant. Again, I think he's an American master. Uh, but you've got Kyle McLaughlin, um, uh, Laura Dern, Dennis Hopper, um, who else? Jack Nance, of course. Uh, who else is in there? Oh, why am I forgetting her name? Isabella Rossellini. Um, she's in there. Uh, yeah, of course she's in there. Uh, I guess that's, I, I guess, the biggies. Um, all the acting is really good. Uh... I, again, I don't know what else to say to it because I, you know, this film is a part of my atomic structure. 
So I, you know, I really can't offer an unbiased opinion. I, I think this is a brilliant film uh, that should be seen by everyone. Um, and I think it also features uh, one of this one of the great screen performances of all time. Uh, and and you know, Dennis Hopper is obviously Dennis Hopper. He he did uh, he did many many great performances, but I would say that his Frank Booth is iconic. And and maybe that word is overused. I don't feel that I overuse it, but uh, it is truly an iconic performance. And if Dennis Hopper is an icon himself, it is because of Blue Velvet. Uh, and maybe, you know, somewhat Easy Rider in Apocalypse Now. But, uh, you know, I don't, I don't know what else to say about it. it most importantly, if you love a movie... You don't know how much you really love it unless you've ever seen it on the big screen. So if, if something ever comes near you that you want to see and, and it's going to be on the big screen, then you must do it. You know, I cannot recommend that experience more, um, no matter what the film. If you love it, you will love it even more. Um, you know, I, I don't know what else to say. I, I don't know what else to say uh, other than I think that uh, Blue Velvet's one of the great films of the 80s. Uh, it's it uh, you know cements uh, Dennis Hopper as an icon. It uh, it showed that David Lynch was not going anywhere. Uh, I'd say that maybe Blue Velvet was like his first commercial, you know, expression. You know, he he made obviously Eraserhead is uncompromising and a vision of of only David Lynch you know could produce, uh, but. You know, Eraserhead is a beyond independent film. I'm sure it made absolutely no money. Uh, and, of course, made outside of the studio system. Um, and yet that uncompromising, visionary, uh, you know, feel is, is, is still there. Uh, and I think, you know, this might have been like one of David Lynch's first film, if not his first film, outside. Well, maybe in the studio system, but his control, you know, he's got the final cut. Uh, you know, the films before this, uh, Dune, Elephant Man, uh, Elephant Man's one of, you know, another of the great films, but it, uh, again, it's a studio film. Um, I, again, I just think this was a game changer for David Lynch and to show that, you know, he's he's here to stay he's he's got something to say and it's different and better than most anything else uh, that Hollywood could produce um, you know so I I think this is just a, a, a work of uh, staggering power and I, I really don't know what else to say about that um, so it's blue velvet for me it's an 11 uh, so please if you've never seen blue velvet my god uh, do something about that thank you